<laughs> I remember the first time they called me up to come and read my memory verse. Pastor's child. My legs were shaking. <laughs> the first time I got in the front like this, the memory disappeared. <laughs> Y'all think it was easy? I mumbled and mumbled and mumbled through everything to the end. So, I want you to please put your hands together for these children this morning. They did a great job. It's not easy. You see them counting like ABC through the words. <laughs> but they did a great job. May the Lord continue to uphold you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, I'd like to talk to us about the topic that I called the heart. The heart. Amen? Amen. The heart. But before I go into the word, I'd like us to pray. Shall, shall we bow our head in prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning, O oh God. Thank you for this fire you have brought us, O oh God. Father, we are going into your word right now. Lord, go with us. Amen. Teach us, Lord. Inspire us, O oh God. Give us an open heart, O oh God. And a hearing, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Teach us in your way, O oh God. Whatever we shall hear this morning, O oh God, give us the understanding of your word, O oh God. It's not up to us, O oh God, but unto you, Lord, be all the glory, all the honor, and all the power. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Recently, after many years in the ministry, I wanted to have a deeper understanding on one subject, the heart. Now, not that I want to be a psychologist or a cardiologist, <laughs> but just like some of our youths, have questions when they see us act some way at home and act some way at the church when they hear us say something about our so called Christian brothers behind their back and they also hear us act, see us act like angels and saints in the church When they hear us say things that are not even godly, and just as we see them, it's like all is well. So do I too. I have a question. And this may answer some of the questions our youth may have. I've got questions that needed to be answered. Like, why are some people haters? Or why do people hate people? Why are some so nice? And why are some hypocrites? Why can't people just remain nice? Why do people do what they do? Why do people just make up stories to defame other people? Why do people choose to be who they are? Why? 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 And the question goes on and on and on. It seems to me that everything in our lives, both good and bad, stems from the heart. Amen? Amen. Such as kindness, love, greed, and even hate. So it is clear that the heart matters in every relationship, either with God or with people. Amen? Amen? In my study of the heart, this is what I come up with. I find out that the better understanding I have of the heart, the better understanding I will have of myself and others. Amen. And the better relationship I will also have with God and with each other. Amen? Amen. So I started my study on the heart. I still have a long way to go to say that I I know something about the heart, about human heart. Today, you are about to hear my preliminary study on the subject. In fact, I'm going to try to 
do a series on this topic. I hope and pray that the series will lead us to a better understanding of our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. And the care of our heart and better relationship. Amen. Amen. Now, what is heart? What do I mean by heart? We hear heart. If I ask you what does heart mean, some of us will have different meanings, different interpretations of the heart. And nothing may be wrong about it. Let us look at the definitions of the heart. There are three categories of definitions for the heart. You can define the heart medically. I would like some people, if you want to write something down, please do. Medically, you can define the heart. Poetically or artistically, you can define the heart. And also, scripturally, you can define the heart. Medically speaking, according to Oxford Dictionary, the heart is a hollow muscular organ that pumps the blood through the circulatory system by rhythmic contraction and dilation. Poetically and artistically, artistically speaking, according to dictionary.com, the heart it is the center of the total personality, especially with reference to intuition, feeling, or emotion. Scripturally speaking, the heart is the innermost seat of emotion, of our mind, will, conscience, and appetites. But this morning, I am going to strictly focus on the scriptural sense of the heart. I, that is, the heart as the innermost seat of emotion, mind, conscience, thoughts, will, and appetite. Amen? Amen. I'm going to take my time on this message. And I'm not going to rush through. I know my time is very fast going. But wherever I stop, we'll continue next time. Amen? Amen. If the Lord tarries is coming. Our mindset is tuned to the separation of heart and mind or heart and head due to platonic distinctions. Please note here that I make no distinction between heart and emotion or mind and intellect because the scripture did not make a clear cut distinction between emotion and intellect. So, in fact, the ancient Hebrew believed that all the characteristics of modern day heart and mind were interconnected and originated from one entity, not two, and they call them heart. Amen? So I will also call it heart, if that is okay with you. When I say heart, it covers both the mind and emotion. According to the Bible, I find out that there are three kinds of heart. Amen? The Bible talks about three kinds of heart. The heart of God, as in Genesis chapter 6, 5, Jeremiah 32, 41, Ezekiel 28, verse 2. The heart of man, as in Jeremiah 7, 19, the heart of the beast, as in Daniel chapter 5, verse 21. The heart of God. Aren't you grateful that God himself has a heart? <laughs> the heart of God imagine if God don't have a heart <laughs> the heart of God really deserves a fully sermon for another time and may God allow us time to get to it in Jesus name yes. but I will tell you this much about the heart of God watch this out of his heart I mean God's heart God created heavens and the earth that is in his intellect. Out of his heart, he has chosen us to be his children. That is by his will. Out of his heart, he loves us unconditionally. That is his emotion. Amen? Amen. To him, to God, each soul is equal. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, that it causes the sun to shine on the evil yes, and on the good. And it sends rain on the righteous 
and on the unrighteous. Amen? Amen. He never gives up on anyone unless they rejected him. Okay. In fact, God's loving kindness and his generosity and his mercy endure it forever. All out of his loving heart. It's a wonderful thing that we can worship a God and belong to a God that has a heart. Amen. 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 So loving. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now let's look at the heart of man. The Bible says when God created Adam and Eve, he in his image and in his likeness indeed. He gave them the heart that shared the characteristics of God. Pure and innocent, loving, kind, creative, with no sign or touch of evil at all. However, when they disobeyed, when they disobeyed God, sin penetrated and went all the way to the core. And still forever. For instance, during the time of Noah, God decided the Bible says that God was deeply grieved with the constant evil thoughts of humans' heart. To the point that he regretted that he created man and wanted a new start. So through the great flood, he wiped out humanity off from the surface of the earth, except for the family of Noah, eight in number. However, Noah's, Noah's family, after the, the flood went over, they still have the old heart, right? And old behavior. And old, old character. It still stay on, right? Isn't that the same way when we say we give our life to Jesus? The Bible says, all things are passed away, right? Behold, everything becomes new, but some of us still carry the old thing with us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Thousands of years later, God described the condition of the human heart to prophet Jeremiah as follows. Jeremiah chapter 17 that we read. Verse 9 says, the heart, of, the heart is more deceitful than all else, than everything else that God created, and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Almost the millennia passed since prophet Jeremiah. And we are in the 21st century. And the heart is still sick. Amen? Amen. More deceitful than all else. Will you agree with me on that? Yes, sir. Uh, you can be standing with somebody right now. You're smiling together. Fresh face. Fresh looking. But there's something going in that heart. That you don't know nothing about. You may be eating with somebody right now. In the same place. Jesus said to Judah. Say what you have to do sir. Do it good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may be taking hands together in the same bowl. And he's still planning to kill you. Just turn your eye. He drop something in the food. Amen. Amen. The heart is still sick. So sick. In the 21st century. Then the heart of the beast. The reference on the heart of a beast is also found in the Bible only once. The heart of a beast demonstrates basic instinct of survival. No reason, no ability to create, no conscience or no reverence of life. All is simply meant for is to survive the struggle. And that is the heart some of us have now. They don't care about anybody else. They just think they have to struggle every day. They just think they have to hustle every day. Many of us will come before God and say, Father, Daddy, ah, I need a job. I need a job. I need a job. And then when God provided a job, job take you away from God. We begin to struggle to survive. Help us, Lord. I know the condition of this country sometimes may push you to the edge. But don't forget God. Amen. The heart only knows daily survival among praise and predators. One man actually experienced and had, had it for seven years. In the book of Daniel chapter 4, 
verse 28 to 32. And I'm going to read Daniel 5, 21. The Bible says, He, King Nebuchadnezzar, was also driven away from mankind. And his heart was made like that of beasts. And his dwelling place was with the wild donkeys. He was given grass to eat like cattle. And his body was drenched with the dew of heaven. Until he recognized that the most high God is ruler over all realm of mankind. And that he set over it whoever he wishes. So when God gives you a life, <laughs> and you have a heart that he gave you as well. But you can think that everything you have, it is you that made it. You can use that man as an example. Amen? Amen. I'm not going to go too far. Today I like to keep my focus on human art. What is happening in the heart? Can you take a moment and listen to your heart? What is happening in your heart right now? Let me tell you something. You can forget everything I'm preaching today. However, please remember this. Your heart is a battleground between God and the enemy of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. That is the devil. That's right. He vies for your worship, for your devotion, for your affection. And to be a means to compete eagerly with someone in order to do or achieve something. He struggles with God on a daily basis. He fights on a, on a daily basis to get your worship. So I tell people, when things are not going right in your life, it is not time for you to bow your head down in sorrow. Because the enemy will steal that glory and run with it. When you are going, going through a hard time, yes. find some beautiful yes. worship songs yes, and begin to sing it. Yes, it's going to be hard in the beginning because it's not easy, easy to cry while you are laughing. Yes, it's not easy to laugh when you are crying. It's going to be hard. But when as you start to struggle through, through that song and stumble through that song, you begin to gain strength. Yes. You begin to gain strength. Yes. You begin to, to gain strength. Before you know, you forget you have trouble. And God will, will, will get the glory. And the devil will flee from you. And what the Bible says, resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Do not bow your head down. In sorrow. To no matter circumstance. To whatever issue you're going through. Amen? Amen. He wants, to, he wants to take your worship. Yes, and when trouble comes, you know, Jesus already warned you now. In this world, you will face tribulations. Yes, right. You already foretold, you know. And he made it easy by overcoming it. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody in this house this morning? Yes. Jesus has made it easy. So he means you will go through. Uh-huh. But whatever is supposed to take your life will no longer take your life. Yes. Whatever is supposed to put your air, your back against the wall can no longer put your back against the wall. Whatever is supposed to put you to shame cannot put you to shame. Why? Because he has overcome. So when you are going through that tribulation, keep your focus. And just begin to worship. Exalt his holy name. Ah, call him Jehovah. <laughs> call him Alpha. Call him Provider. Call him Supporter. Worship him. And the devil will run away from you. He will flee. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 8, 11 says, God saw the word of God in the heart of a man when he created man. And 8, 12 says, the devil snatches away the word sown in the heart. Amen? That, that raised the question in my heart. Is that how weak the heart is? That the devil can just snatch the word that God has planted. But guess what? The heart could be weak sometimes because we're human. And for as long as we're in the human nature, 
Temptation will come. Amen. 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 Your heart is like an open bowl, and both God and devil have access to it. Amen. Just like a, your pot of soup. That's the way I, I, I reference your heart to a pot of soup. The devil has access. The Lord has access. Amen. Amen. As, as a matter of fact, uh, three bodies have access to your heart. Number one is yourself. Number two is God. Number three is the devil. So, if you're, let me put it this way, it's very important. You know, God is a triune God. Man also, He made us, we also have triune your spirit, your soul, and your body. And your body. If three of them does not communicate, you will easily fall prey Amen. to the devices of the devil. Amen. 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 So you have to gather yourself together. Amen. Amen. If yourself can stand straight, the devil cannot withstand you. And God will have his way. I, I don't hear no amen in the house. Amen. I say if you can keep yourself and guide yourself and keep yourself straight. God will take place. Amen. Devil will flee. Amen. 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 But if you are a wishy-washy Christian, uh-huh. hello, uh-huh. doubt sets in every time. Right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You allow doubt to come in your heart every time. The farther you are from God, the closer to the devil you will be. Right. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hmm. All of them all the three parties can throw in and take out of your life anything they can add and deduct any thoughts out of your heart amen Amen. let me elaborate a little bit on this beginning with self what each party can do to our heart number one self can initiate self can retain Self can remove any thoughts, any wishes, and plan in our heart, either good or bad. Amen? Amen. And here are some examples. We can humble ourselves and incline our heart to God. That's up to self. We can watch over our heart with all diligence, as in Proverbs 4.23. That's up to self. We can also neglect the care of our hearts and let it be defiled. That's up to self. Amen? Amen. When your heart is neglected, let's see what Jesus said in Mark 7, 21 to 23. It says, From within and out of the heart of men, Proceed the evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murder, adulteries, deed of coveting and wickedness, deceit, sensuality, evil, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things proceed from within the defiled heart of man. That's when your heart is not careful. When self is not in charge, when self is not strong, when self is weak, hello, Amen. you'll be having different thoughts. The, the enemy will bring different thoughts through your mind. Through your mind. He might just give you a gun and advise you to kill somebody. That's all he do. And, and that's how you know if, if, if somebody is a killer from birth. The devil just give you a gun and he said kill somebody. How to kill, he didn't tell you. Where to kill, he didn't tell you. And you grab the gun and you went straight and killed that person. They are a killer from birth. Either by words of mouth, by gun, or by sword. Because all the devil do is give you a weapon. It's up to you to strategize. And you went on and executed. Amen? Now, who is the devil? Too many Christians have a very naive understanding of the devil. 
Majority of us now, if I say who is the devil, we think is that man with two horns on his head. Red eyes. <laughs> Giant. He's so dark in complexion. Hello? <laughs> Others believe it is just a personification of evil. Some people don't believe the devil exists. Most of us depict him as a guy holding a peach fork. With two horns on his head and a tail. Or a cute little guy sitting on his shoulder whispering to us. That's not the devil. The devil is much more a cunning creature than those images. He has only one goal. And that goal is his ministry. To kill. To steal. And to destroy. What does he do? First time he meets you. He wants to kill your faith. You allow the devil to kill your faith. You become somebody who has no faith in anything again. And when you and God made it in a way that we must have every human being must have a faith in something. Amen. Now you don't have faith in anything no more. Automatic isolation. Ready for destruction. Amen. Amen. And what does it destroy? It comes after your heart. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Oh, I pray for somebody under my under the sound of my voice this morning who may be going through any kind of temptation that is maybe luring them away from God. The Lord will touch your heart today and it will bring you back home. In the name of Jesus. He steals, he kills, and he destroys. John 10.10. 10. So in order to achieve his goal, he diligently works. That would don't rest, though. If you are a prayerless Christian, you need Jesus in your life. Uh -uh. I said you need Jesus in your life. Because even prayerful Christian still go through attack. Talk less you who don't pray. And many of us, we were prayer warrior back where we come from and then we come here, eat bread and butter and become a sophisticated Christian. When the Bible says watch and pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus name. Amen. It snatches anything good and godly away from your heart. Especially God's word sown in your heart. Luke 8, 12. Distraction and sleeping during sermon. God will help us all. That's one major tool the enemy uses to snatch the word. Yes, we work hard. Some of us don't drink coffee. Some of us do drink coffee. Try all you can to stay alive in the church. Amen? Amen. Distraction and sleeping during summer. Ah, the Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. Some of us are, especially in this time of Corona, some of us are fashionably designed the way we sleep in the church. Just put that mask in the eyes and, and dim that eye. Nobody will know you are sleeping. The <laughs> Lord deliver us in Jesus' name. <laughs> I know I'm touching. I'm talking to somebody up in the house here. The Lord will help us. Amen. We have designed that sleeping style yes. with the mask. Even when the next person next to you is not wearing mask, even when you feel like you're not going to wear, wear mask, but you know you might fall asleep in the church, just put the mask on. Ah, the devil is a liar. Amen. The devil will not catch me in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you are that type of brother and sister that put the mask, the Lord is sending a message to you this morning. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. After he stole all that good things from there, he fills it up with evil, unclean, negative, destructive thoughts that you often take as yours. Judas Iscariot in the, in the book of John 13, 12, uh, verse 2, he says, 
And the supper being ended, the devil having now put into his heart, into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. That's what he does. He come, he steal, he kill, and aim for destruction. Amen? So yourself must be strong in the Lord. Remember, three entities, three parties have access to your heart like a pot of soup. I'm going to stop right here because of our time and some other things we have to do. Next time I have the privilege, we go into God. Who is God? Three entities have access to your pot of soup, which is your heart. Yourself first. Then God and the devil. So you have to be strong in the Lord. That is the self. Put on the armor of Christ. Because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against power, against principalities, against rulers of darkness in high places. Let's rise up on our feet. Amen. 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 We're going to continue next time. If I have the privilege, if the Lord tarries, is coming. Please don't forget. Self, God, and the devil. There's only one prayer for us. You're going to pray. Ask God to purify and purge and cleanse your heart only today in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voices and begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, Father, purify my heart. Purify and watch your full of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, purify my heart by your power, by your strength. Jehovah God of glory, Father, purify my heart. Father, purify my heart. Purify my heart. Talk to God in the name of the Lord. to purify your heart. Father, the the Lord of Jesus. Father, purify my heart. Turn to God to sanctify your heart. To give you a clean heart. Give me a clean heart. A clean heart. A sanctified heart. Give me a sanctified heart. Hide the heart that fears God. That worship God. That honors God. The heart that honors you. The that Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our Father, we honor you so much. We bless your name and thank you for today. Thank you for the message. Thank you for your servant to use for us. Father, take all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As we know, Lord Jesus, that our heart as we have today, as you want to have our heart, Satan too, he wanted to have it. And we can make up our mind, our heart, either to follow God or to follow the other side. And today, Father, we pray, we commit every one of us unto you, O Lord. Anything that may be dragging us, Lord Jesus, to disobey you, to harden our heart, we pray. Let such a thing be removed from our heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Take control of our hearts. Holy Spirit, take control of our hearts. Mighty Father, take control of our hearts. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. As we, are going, as we are going the journey of this new week, Holy Spirit, minister to us. Give us the anointing and the ability to be able to check ourselves, to even know what is going on, even in our hearts. Either we are yielded to you or we are yielded to the devil. Amen. Give us victory, Holy Spirit, Amen. and take all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Amen. We bless, we worship you, Lord. The servant you use for us to deliver Jesus, empower him. Amen. Refill him with your fire. Amen. Refill him with your power. Amen. Every one of us listen to this word, Holy Spirit, refill us with your power. Amen. Help us to obey you, Lord, Amen. and take all the glory. Amen. Thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' name. Mighty and wonderfully, we pray. Amen. Who is calling the last thing among our children?
pussy. You know what I mean? Go to the...